Obviously, this is an application of the chain rule. The key to doing the chain rule correctly is to recognize very precisely the structure of the function, and most importantly, to identify the outermost structure of, what's of the function. So when you look at this, you see lots of things going on. You see exponentiation. You guys are with me on that? You see squaring. You see 1 over. You see lots of things mixed together. So you have to look at this function and name what it is what it is that you actually do last. Because what you do first here is you'll square x. If somebody gives you x, right, the first thing you'll do is square x, then add 1 to it, then find 1 over that quantity, then raise e to that power. That's what you would do if you had to do it on the calculator. When you apply the chain rule, you do the last thing first. You, do the, you address the outermost structure first. And the key to doing it right is to say it to yourself. Language is so important when it comes to mathematics. So you should be able to throw away all the details and get straight to the essence of the function you're looking at. So when you look at this, you have to say it's e to some power. And in the first step, it doesn't matter what that power is. It's e to some power. Therefore, you'll be taking advantage of this fact, that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. That's what will play the major role first. And you know that because the derivative of e to the x is e to the x itself, the derivative of e to something will still be e to something, following that rule. And then by the chain rule, you have to take the derivative of that something. So that's how it works. It doesn't matter e to what power it is. As soon as it's e to some power, the derivative will be e to that power, and then times the derivative of that quantity. Make sense? So you have to look at it, and in the simplest possible terms, to state what you're looking at here. And throwing away all the details, what you're looking at here is e to the something. That's how I would put it. And so the derivative is e to the something, and now you have to take the derivative of that something. So if you want to, you can break it up into several steps. I don't recommend doing that. And just write 1 over 1 plus x squared prime, and then keep rolling. That's too much writing. So you should be able to hold this sort of information in your head and know that now I'm on the derivative of 1 over 1 plus x squared. So let's now deal with that. And now you see why it's called the chain rule. Right? Because every time you recognize the outermost structure, take care of that, and then you're reduced to working with what's left. And then you'll do the same thing, and you will once again be reduced to working with what's left, and so on, and so on, and so on. And so you go from one link to the next, and it ends up looking like a chain, at least logically. So now, we have to take the derivative of this quantity. And just about all of you did it by the quotient rule. Raise your hand if you did it by the quotient rule. And that's totally right, and it's totally nuts at the same time. It's just not the right thing to do in this simple case when you have a constant over a function. You should use the chain rule again. Because you look at this, you wouldn't say that this is a fraction of 1 and 1 plus x squared. You would say it's 1 over 1 plus x squared, or the reciprocal of the function, 1 plus x squared. So you're really looking in the outermost sense at the function 1 over x, 1 over x with something plugged into it. So over x squared, this has to be in your bank, in your vocabulary of derivatives. So the derivative that you're looking at here, the interesting question is, do you put parentheses or do you not put parentheses? So I would try not to put parentheses, you should always aspire to have just the right number of parentheses, not too few, not too many. Definitely no parentheses that are not needed for sure. Sometimes parentheses are absolutely required. At other times, it's nice to help you visually group things. And in other situations, it's completely unnecessary. And in those situations, you should definitely skip them. And I think when you interact with Lemma, you should practice using as few parentheses as possible. That'll come in very handy. So, 
Here, unfortunately, because of that minus sign, I would maybe throw in a set of parentheses. Although, I try to avoid parentheses, and I might just sneak this minus in front of the one, just to avoid parentheses. But let's not do that here, so it'll be minus one over, so it's one over something. And the derivative of one over something is minus one over that something squared times the derivative of that something. But with the derivative of that something, we'll deal in just a moment. Right now, we have to take care of the outermost structure. So it becomes 1 plus x squared squared. And we're done with this part. It's just that now we have to roll to the next link in the chain rule. And that's to take the derivative of that something. And that's the derivative of 1 plus x squared. And so that's 2x. So if I'm using a pencil, I will actually erase this and just put in 2x. Okay? And we're done. And then, here is a step that's more or less unnecessary, which is to write this in a more elegant form. And I think you should do it just because you should be in the habit of trying to end up with an expression that's as nice as possible. So the tradition is to write the rational part first, then come the transcendental, then come the irrational and transcendental functions. So here is the form in which I would leave this.